I made a short recently asking who is animation's biggest punching bag, i.e. a character whose sole existence is to be the butt of the joke, whose life is in a constant misery and pain and suffers for it through no fault of their own. And for that question, I got 7,000 responses, and let's just say that the answers ranged wildly. So I thought it'd be interesting to find out who exactly is animation's biggest punching bag. So first of all, everyone is gonna have a completely different opinion. So quickly write down below who your choice is and let's just see how many people agree with you. Okay, so first of all, let's kick this off with Kenny from South Park. Oh my God, they killed Kenny! Now, I have a feeling that most of you chose Kenny. He seems like the most obvious choice, right? He's died in pretty much every way imaginable, from being burnt alive, crushed, exploded and bareheaded in fact, he's been killed so much that I've literally counted every single time this poor kid dies in the show. And let's just say it's a lot. I mean, the creators themselves even tried to kill him off permanently just because they were so sick of him. Because we were basically sick of killing Kenny. Right, right. So it. we were like, let's kill him. Let's have him die and he'll be gone forever. But being a butt monkey is more than just being beaten up or killed, it's also about how the other characters treat them. And aside from Carmen, who occasionally rags on him for being poor, Kenny was actually poorer than me, so technically he's the poorest kid at this goof. No one really picks on Kenny. His friends like him, everyone at school likes him, and thinking about it, Carmen seems to get on well most with Kenny, out of everyone. I kind of always thought you were my best friend. Cartman just seems to rag on everyone generally. So with this in mind, I actually think that South Park has two other characters who might be even bigger butt monkeys. And one of them is Butters. Oh, hey, Butters. Poor sweet naive Butters, he's always getting into trouble for something he has absolutely no idea about, and mostly at the hands of Eric. He got Butters sent to gay conversion camp when he stuck his pee pee in his mouth. Butters, what are you doing? I'm getting a surprise. And he got him grounded by impersonating him on the phone to his parents. Yeah, well, dad's being a little pussy, mum. And when he's not being bullied by Carmen at school, Paul Butters is picked on at home. He's terrorized by his granny. You got any more money, huh? No, you took it all. Why don't you do something about it? And his own mother tries to drown him. You know, I think the car might be moving, mum. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the car's moving. Speaking of which, his parents just seem to hate him generally. He's grounded constantly when he's such a cute little sweetie that just doesn't deserve it. Butters, you are grounded! Ah, uh, dang it! This goes to the extreme when we find out what happens to him in the future, where he's locked up and grounded in his bedroom for many, many years. The thing with Butters is that unlike so many other characters on this list, it's actually really, really funny when things go wrong. He's just so pure and trusting that you can't help but laugh when he finally gets grounded. An Asian turf war, Butters! You are grounded! So therefore, I think Butters is definitely one top contender for the punching bag title. But there is another South Park character who might have him beat, and that is Pip. Oh, what jolly good fun! This Dickensian British chap is literally the OG South Park punching bag, appearing all the way back in the first Ed on Ed pilot. God damn, I hate that kid. And unlike Butters and Kenny, who have their own fair share of friends, Pip has absolutely no one, bless him. Go away, Pip, nobody likes you. Yeah, what kind of name is Pip anyway? And he was briefly friends with a new kid called Damien, you know, Satan's son, but then he used his demonic powers to torture poor Pip just to try and impress the other kids. You see, literally everyone at school hates Pip, and they even call him French. Poor guy. That French people piss me off. He is disliked by the fans too, and his creators. Trey Parker and Matt Stone have gone on record to say just how much they don't like Pip. So much so that they killed him off for good in season 14. I would like to see if you wouldn't mind not smashing our little town to bits. <laughs> So, out of Kenny, Butters and Pip, who do you think gets the worst treatment in South Park? And speaking of characters who die on the regular, let's now talk about Hans Moleman. Today, part four of our series of the agonizing pain in which I live every day. 
The Simpsons' Hans Moleman is basically the original Kenny. He's died at least 40 times, and I know because I've counted every single one of his deaths, and yes, I do love a good kill count, and I found out that he's been blown up, drowned in quicksand, buried alive, and has also had a drill in the brain. Oh no, my brains. And just like Pip, no one likes the guy either. Absolutely no one is gay for Mole Man. No one's gay for Mole Man. Well, I guess except for this guy. You're coming home with me. Yes, Colonel. What's even worse is that carrying the punching bag title for over 30 years has done some pretty horrific damage to poor hands. I'm 31 years old. And unlike Kenny, Butters, or even Pip, who got his very own episode, Mole Man literally only exists to be a joke character. And a painful joke at that. But I cannot talk about The Simpsons without talking about the dud. Hey! He looks just like you, Poindexter! <laughs> yeah, Milhouse Van Houten is definitely up there amongst the most unfortunate characters in Springfield. His best friend Bart once framed him for a crime, causing him to go on the run from the FBI. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything! I don't care. And when he informed his parents that he wasn't their biological son, they celebrated. Oh, thank right. God! Yes! Oh. But you know what? I don't know why you're laughing, Kurt, because you're also a big contender, mate. Uh, I sleep in a racing car, do you? I sleep in a big bed with my wife. Now, let's talk about Squidward from SpongeBob SquarePants. And honestly, this is a character I never really considered as a punching bag until a lot of comments brought him up. This might be because I am also someone who values their peace and quiet, and I can't help but relate to the guy. He's literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. And when I was a kid, I definitely just saw him as a miserable and mean old character. But come on, could you imagine hearing this day in and day out? I'd be hella depressed too. <laughs> Now, personally for me, I don't really think that Squiddy is high up on that list of punching bag characters, but at the same time, he definitely does deserve a mention. Now, let's talk about someone that I am certain about, and that is Klaus from American Dad. Once a renowned ski jumper, Klaus was taken by the CIA and had his mind swapped with a goldfish. So pretty bad, right? Well, it only got worse for him, because he's trapped inside the confines of a tiny bowl and forced to spend the remainder of his lonely, lonely days as the Smiths family's prisoner. Oh, I think it'll be fun. You can't participate, Klaus. I hate you. They treat him like utter crap, especially Roger, who smashes his bowl several times in the show. But despite this mistreatment, Klaus just wants to be accepted as part of the family. Like, remember that time when he bought his family tickets to a concert and he was just so excited and they went without him? Yep, that was cold. What? It was the perfect family night. But from cold, cold water, let's go to deep, deep space. Let's talk about Zoidberg from Futurama. With the new revival of Futurama back on our screens, it got me thinking about the Planet Express Dr. Zoidberg, a guy that's often been described as gross and smelly, and that's just by his friends. No one wants to hang out with Zoidberg, and they seem to barely tolerate him because they always tell him to shut up. Shut up, Zoidberg! Even his own kind find him repulsive. But after hundreds of episodes of being unhappy, he was finally given a happy ending with a lovely lady in the last season. But since the show's return, she hasn't been seen once, and I really, really hope they don't just forget about her and just resort Zoidberg going back into being miserable and lonely again. But that might just be the fate of a lowly punching bag, or we are only a few episodes in and they might still reintroduce her. I guess we'll just have to wait. Jerry from Rick and Morty. I can't help but feel bad for Jerry. His father-in-law is constantly putting him down. Then you can get right back to your dumb vacation with a family that doesn't need you. His kids don't respect him, and his wife barely tolerates him. In Rick and Morty, Jerry was written to be a complete joke, but what I do like about him is that he's also been given a lot of moments to shine and save the day too. And his character has been given a lot of chances to evolve too over the seasons, and although Jerry continues to be a joke, I don't think he deserves the title as animation's biggest punching bag. He's had far too many standout moments. What I have to say about this video is that the characters are in no means in any order. 
But what I will say is that I've definitely saved my personal choice for animation's biggest punching bag until the very end, and that is Meg Griffin from Family Guy. This poor adolescent girl just can't seem to catch a break. Everybody spit on Meg! Stop! Stop! Yeah, ah! Has a character ever been this poorly mistreated by their very own family? Is everyone on the phone? Oh, I gotta go. Something's in the oven. I lost a shoe. No, no, don't leave me on the phone with her! Stewie? Her dad farts on her. <laughs> and her mother washes her clothes with soiled diapers. Oh yeah, and also gets off with her boyfriends. Her entire life is endless suffering, from the beginning where her parents try to abandon her as soon as she was born, then they always forget her birthday, and then they have even mistaken her for a barrel. Mayor Griffin is quite literally the lightning rod for her family's hate. They direct all of their insults towards her instead of each other, which has kept them together. And that's a lot of pressure for a young girl to bear. Imagine knowing that your sole existence is to be mistreated, and if you finally stand up for yourself, then you risk tearing your family apart. And personally, I also feel like compared to the other characters on this list, that Meg's abuse feels the most real. Because although her bullying is really pushed to a level which is very, very cartoony, I can imagine that many people actually experience something like this in their very own home. So scrolling down and looking at the comments, who has the most votes? Now there isn't really a true answer to this question as it's totally subjective, but it is still going to be really interesting reading through your responses and hearing exactly what you you've got to say.